So welcome back you bunch of munters. What have we got here? Ta-da! We have a clean, clean 3130 engine block. So I took it to Burham Engines and they washed it off marvellously. As you can see it's yellow on the inside, not turd brown. Uh, what we're going to do today, oh Jesus, is knock out some of the liners. I have done one already just to see how difficult they were. Yeah, so I've got six of them to knock out, well, five now, and then uh, see what new ones are gonna look like, because I have got the engine kit, but I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm gonna be a complete animal and use uh, a cut up. Bale's back time. You can get proper fullers for them, but I don't have one, and I'm not using these liners again, so they will come out the way I want them to, hopefully. Just like that. Oh, and this one's got a shim on it as well. The first one had a shim on too, as you can see. Just this tiny little shim. Because when we put the new ones in, we've got to have a dial test indicator and measure the stick out. Because obviously they sit proud. So we've got to, it's going to take a bit of doing. Just got to measure how far they stick out, and you can be within a certain parameter, I'll just look in the book and tell you. So if we look here, it's 0 0.02 to 0.10 mil. I know it doesn't focus very well, but that is this part, the outer part of this lip and the block. That is what gap you need to measure. I'll get it in this page, in this drawing here. I'll change the camera so and see if you can. So that is the measurement, D, this is the liner, so that's, that's that lip there. So we need to measure from the outer part of the lip to the block face. So it's this lower piece here, obviously there's a ridge, this outside piece to the block. And this shim will shim the gap up if it is too big, basically. If the gap is too big. So that's that's what we need to do. I'm putting new liners in, obviously you can see I've well at the bottom of that one. Putting new ones in, which is in my engine kit there. In that bag is the crankshaft that's covered in oil. I've wrapped it in bags inside there just because it's so damp at the moment. Uh, I just wanted to keep it keep it from rusting over again. That was uh, ten 10 over or 10 under, which one you want to call it, and I think you can go up to about 50 over, so that really wasn't that bad. In that box is the engine kit. So I have um, injectors. What's that? That's the oil pump. This is a liner, liner and piston kit, cylinder head bolts, all gaskets and everything down in here. That's a, pr oh, which one's that? Is that a proper? That's either a proper rocker cover gasket or a proper head gasket, I can't remember. When you're doing a rebuild kit and you are using the Vapormatic engine kit, you do want to get a proper John Deere rocker cover gasket, because they give you a cork one, but it will leak. Anyway, back to these liners. So they're all out, as you can see. And in the bottom, there's three O-rings, obviously, the top one is a square one, and that's come out on the liner. But what I found quite interesting was that red one's on the bottom, but in every other, it's in the middle. So there's either a reason for that, or somebody made a boo-boo when they rebuilt this engine last, or from the factory. So there's two O-rings in there. What I'll do is take those out, and then probably blow all the rust, and you can see, in the block out that's where all the coolant goes in there in there and uh, yeah just get that nice and clean and then have a test fit of the other liners it turns out all of them had shims on which I was a bit surprised at but yeah it doesn't necessarily mean that the other ones will need shims but we'll measure it and find out so all the o-rings are out now what I'm going to do is flip the block over and then I can, oh, I can clean it. Oh, my phone's ringing just as I need to do something. 
Hello. Upright. God, Jesus. I mean, this isn't heavy at all. It's so light. Oh. That's why it's on a pallet, so I can just roll it around and it's not going to upset it. So what I'm going to do now is go around this with like a wire wheel and all down in the bottom there as much as I can. Just to clean it up. Looks quite fancy that, doesn't it? Oh, look at that! Yeah. As a reminder to future me, the red o-ring was in the middle. Red o-ring in the middle. No idea what happened here. Black o-ring on the bottom and then the square one at the top. I don't know why there's a square one. I think it's just so it sits on the casting lip or something. But yes, cleaning up time. So that's just one or two of them wire wheeled off. I wasn't going to do the whole lot because we'll be here forever otherwise. But yeah, you just want to get all where the mating surfaces are. Like if there's a square corner, make sure you get a pick or something right in there. I've got this on my pocket knife. Just get right in the edges, especially down in the in the bottom of the boards where the O-rings go, because obviously that seals the oil from the water. So you don't want or coolant or whatever you want to call it. But over here on the bench, ta -da, I've got lovely shiny new parts. Obviously, vapormatic supplies most of the. Most of the parts, so that's the O-rings in there. Piston rings, I won't get those out until we got the pistons ready because I don't want to break anything. Here's the liner. I like how they... Packaged everything up so nicely. And then pistol. New gudgeon pin. Circlips. And then the piston de resistance. Let's see what I did there. And that one right there. Very nice, as you can see, it's not rusty and it fits in there. It fits in there. It doesn't fit in there, but it does. Because I have fit in there before. There, like that, see? Fits in there, lovely. So. So this will... Obviously there's no O-rings and no shims on anything yet. I'm just going to sit this down in here. And then obviously we need to measure just off the edge there. That's what that new liner looks like in there. God, it looks sexy, doesn't it? Uh, but yeah, I'll get me thingy caliper, whatever that is out, and uh, have a measure of that. Right, so this is the setup you need. Obviously, it needs to be bolted down tight, not to the same tightness the head the head will be at, just enough to snug it in there, basically. And then I've got my dial test indicator. It's currently on. What's it on? Well, actually, I'll bring it back. Bring it back there. So yeah, it's currently on 11. And then if we move it across, it's on, what's it on? 15, 16, it's on between 16 and 17. So do some quick maths. So I've gone 16 and a half minus 12, and that gives us 4.5, which is within the parameter of 10 and 0.2. Yeah, so it'd be 0.45 then, basically, because each of the little increments is 0 0.01 mil. So that's that one done. Initially, I put it in with the shim, but it came out as being about 20. So that's no good. It's got to be within that parameter. So what I'll do now is do the same for the other five. And then um, after that, take them out, put the earrings in, uh, press or knock, is what it says, press or knock them back in. And then what a lot of people do is just put the bolts back in like that just to hold it in so they don't pop back out again. But yeah, obviously I've showed you that one. I'll do the lot. So it saves you looking at the same thing 
six times over. And also, I fitted a new piston onto its connecting rod. That's still fairly tight on there, which is good. It took a bit of getting that one out, really. But yeah, new gudgeon pin comes with the piston anyway, and that fits nicely. Uh, and then obviously the rings will need to go on before we put them in we've got to put the crank in but I want to get all the liners in first then flop it on its side put the crank in hopefully I should be able to put the crank in like that if not then I'll have to try and work a way of flipping it right over but we'll come to that when we get to it so that's all them measured in they all measured pretty much the same which was good without shims so what I'll be doing now is putting the o-rings in the bottom of the block I'm fairly sure the square one has to slide over the piston because it it just falls straight in and it says in the book to put it in the bottom of the piston but or bottom of the block to slide the liner through but that's not going to happen and the old ones came out with them on so what I'll do is put the that square one on that one and then put the other ones with soapy water in the block and they say soapy water because if you put oil in them apparently they swell up so no idea if that's true but you know I'll get to soaping them up and putting them in the block put the bottom ones in you can't see doing that anyway so there's not much point trying to film it I'm learning as I'm going doing this because I've never done one before. I've done a 165 Perkins engine. But other than that. Oh, yeah. Right, and you have to make sure it's got no twists in it either. Watch that. Does not. And slide that right to the bottom of the liner. This one seats on the block inside. You've got to make sure that's really clean down there. And then get a good smear of washing up liquid there. Aim in there. And then apparently. Yeah, just like that, and then repeat that six more times. If you if you're going to move the block around, it probably is an idea just to put a bolt on each side just to make sure it doesn't pop out. But each to their own, I suppose. Yeah, six more times, and then that's done. Huh, so that's all them in. They went in quite well, really. Probably means I did them wrong. Uh, and they all slid in nice. I think it does make a big difference having some soapy water because it just stops them trying to roll in the block or anything. Um, the next job I think will be to maybe bolt them in like that the whole way along. Flop on its side, put the crank in. Whether this will, whether that will be in this video or the next video, I don't know. Uh, I've had the cylinder head done. I had that done first actually. That's I won't get that out because that's it's been there a while and it's nice dry under there but what they found when they did it when they rung me when it was in there in the machine shop because they skimmed it went through all the valves they said that everything was fine bar two valves or one valve he said get two the chem a pack of four obviously one was junk and um, yeah so I didn't even think it really needed the four, but that's surprising considering that it was sat in water for as long as it was, and the crank was surprisingly fine as well. The all the piston rings, I think we worked out that they were buggered anyway, but I've got new ones, new ones to go in the kit. So, so yeah. I think that might be the end of the video. If it is, thanks for watching. If it's not, I'll probably carry on warbling about something else. But yeah, see you in the next one.
Oh, before I go, remember when you're measuring it, measuring it in each corner. Obviously, it's round, but like this bolt hole, this bolt hole, this bolt, and this bolt hole, and just take an average measurement from all four of those, and then for, and then take an average between the six. So then you've got an average across the board of the average of all of the circles. Because as we said, it's got to be within yeah, 2 to 10, 0.02 to 0 0.010. So all the way across the board. It took me nearly all day to do that. I'm knackered and I'm very cold now. But it is done, which is marvellous. Hopefully we won't have any problems. Shouldn't do. But yeah. Goodbye.